Hi, this is Rochelle with Scrap Craftastic, and I am going to be working on a laminate pouch type project. But before I do, I want to share this new kit that I have available over in my Journal Life's Journey Etsy shop. I will link to it in the description box below if you're interested. This is a journal making handmade journal type kit. Um, this is the first part of it. It comes in three sections. We have collage and journal pages and two separate ephemera kits. So I'm going to start with the collage and journal pages. I'm just going to flip through them real quick so you can see what they look like. And even though these are the collage style pages, they can be used as journal pages too. The difference is this is my favorite page of them all. I love it so much. So yeah, all of these can be used just like you would use your scrapbook paper. It's just a digital that you can print. And you can reduce the size uh, to any size that you want. So these are the journal pages. This is what they look like. So the difference is the journal pages give you a little bit more room to actually write on the page. And I don't know why I got some of these upside down. So it goes like that. Some very simple patterns that are pushed to the background so that they can be written on. So this is the project that I mentioned uh, in the Dollar Tree video that I had been working on and just kind of obsessed with. I finally got it ready to go in my Etsy shop last night. So here we go. That's all of the pages. This is for the project that we're working on today. So that's the actual collage pages and the journal pages. Then these are from the ephemera kits. So one kit is eight pages. The other is 10 pages. I'm just going to show you all 18 pages. Um, and let's see if we can get these turned the right direction. I've already flipped through them and been playing around with them. So these are journaling cards. So some journaling cards, a uh, book plate, and some large tabs. More journaling cards. With the journaling cards, you have the background and the border. So you can choose to include some of that background. You can just include the border or you can just cut out the card um, without any of that. So it kind of gives you some options. You get a large envelope ticket strip and then individual tickets this is a file folder you got some small tags and some tabs coin envelope and all of these cards can fit into the coin envelope of course this one would need to fold same here these cards would fit into this envelope and also have some small tags some medium-sized tags that are ready to be decorated some large tags and labels, some more of the tags. So each of these tags has a miniature size tag that coordinates with it. Then we have um, specimen slides. We've got two specimen slides and two regular slides plus some labels. And then this is a four by six envelope, approximately four by six. And this is also a four by six envelope. So that's everything in the She Blooms kit that is available in my Journal Life's Journey Etsy shop. Okay, so off to what I'm going to try and do. I'm going to try and make a pouch with a closure, but I'm using laminate and a clear bag. So I know we get these a lot. Um, we order stickers and stuff and this one is fairly new it has a few dents in it but with this as long as it's bigger than the size that you need you can use this to make any size I'm going to kind of stick with maybe I should go down to four by six that way 
I can use it for something. No, I'm going to make it five by seven. Let's make it five by seven. So I've already started cutting out my pieces that I want to include. This is going to be similar to the, um, let me show you. Hopefully, if things work out right, it will be similar to the page mark, the clear page mark that we made. So we made one with a tab, this one. We also have some stamping on there. And then maybe I'll stamp again. I kind of like that. Uh, where's the other one? I think it's in my other. Nope, it's in here. Then we had this one was one of the first ones that I made. And basically it is the images are printed on vellum and I placed them on another piece of acetate or either a sealed laminate pouch. I think the acetate works better because laminate on laminate sometimes gets cloudy. But in this case, we're using this cellophane pouch. So we'll see how that goes. Anywho, those are examples of ones that I've made previously and I will link to them in the iCard up above so you can check them out. So today we're kind of playing around with that idea and then taking it a step further. Okay, so I printed out some images on vellum. Some of these you may have seen already. Some you may not have. I actually used some of the uh, deco pieces from the kit that I just showed you. I cut those out because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And then I cut a few pieces out from another kit from Chella Creates. And I printed these from the spring kit from Chella Creates. But I, did, I decided not to use those. Then there was this Beach Vibes kit and I used some of it already. As you can see, <laughs> I've been cutting on it. This is another one. Um, that's available at Chella Creates. I don't remember the name. This is just one page. And I think this goes with the beach vibes. So yeah, that was kind of what I printed to be able to pull from. So this is what I actually pulled. I pulled this doll, this quote, do what you love. And this graphic with the plants now a little trick that I figured out <laughs> because some of the things that I cut out before were much lighter and I couldn't really tell once I got to cutting with the scissors where I needed to cut around so what I did is went around the graphic with my pencil and I'll just make sure to try and cut inside the pencil line slightly and then I don't have to worry about the parts that I can't see because I've got that pencil line there to guide me. So if you have, if you're printing on vellum and some parts are really light where you can't see them, try that. I'm not completely happy with that but I'm also not crazy about these palm trees but let me see what I can do with it even though I don't necessarily need to mark this I'm going to so it's usually better to put it on a piece of paper something white let's put it on this and trace around where you want to cut at. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. Just kind of giving yourself a guide of where to go so you can actually see it better on the vellum. And I mean, you could do this with a pen, but I'm using pencil in case I miss cutting inside of the line a little bit. That way I can just go back with my kneaded eraser and erase the pencil line if I need to. 
So it's all outlined. Now you just cut. So we got that cut out. I think I can do it something like that. I think I might get that butterfly or the dragonfly. Let's do the dragonfly. Okay, sorry, I should have had all of this cut prior, but I wasn't quite sure what I was doing. I'm gonna get that butterfly too. So now that I showed you how to do the outline and cut it, I'm gonna pause and cut these out and come back. Um, again, all of these are from Chella Creates. I do have a discount code for Chella Creates. The discount code and the link will be in the description box below. Okay, so this is the look that I have set up. I also didn't take into account that I'm cutting this down. So I did do the butterfly and the dragonfly, but I don't think I'm going to need both of them. And I think I prefer to use the dragonfly and hopefully I'll still be able to use it once I cut it down. Hopefully that is not too horrible uh, with the white behind it. I'm going to have to remove these from my packaging and I'm going to take my paper trimmer and cut it down to the size that I want. So in this case, you have to leave the seal around the pocket. You can't cut into the seal like I did in previous videos. So that means you're gonna have about an eighth of an inch extra around the side. So if you want this to be a specific size, then you have to take that into account. I'm not worried about it being exactly five by seven. So I know that what I'm going to end up with will be larger than five by seven. So it'll probably be about five and a quarter by seven and a quarter or something like that, but that's fine. So I'm just gonna cut this down to five by seven. It doesn't matter that I'm cutting open the side. Let's see, I wanna do this side cause this is the side that was sealed. Um, it doesn't matter because once we put the laminate on, it's gonna seal the sides again. So you don't have to worry about that. And yeah, so that's why I was saying you can use any size bag as long as it's slightly bigger than what you need or the exact size of what you need. So I'm cutting this down to five by seven. And trying to keep it as lint free as possible, which is tough to do on my desk. I need a new mat. Um, yeah. So anywho, we got our base now this is where you decide do you want your graphics to be in the front of the pocket or the back of the pocket for me i'm going to put them in the front um yeah because then i feel like anything that i stick in there they will just lay on top if i put it in the back it's going to cover them up so i think it's best to put it on the front i don't know how i want to do this i'm trying to eliminate the glare a little bit Let's get another piece of cardstock and see if that's going to help. Because when I have these shiny um, surfaces out, it plays with the brightness on my camera, too. Ooh, I got a lot of spots on there that need to be erased. <laughs> I was trying to hurry and I hit the line a lot. So, yeah, I'm just taking my kneaded eraser and removing those pencil marks carefully let me check the others I'm not so bad on this one i hope i can remember my layout here we go got our base piece which is also going to also going to serve as our pocket here let's put these pieces together may not be able to fit all the pieces. I think I will take out the do what you love and just do the layout like this because this is a lot. That's how I'm going to do it, I think. Yes, 
just try to keep everything on the baggie okay now it's the tricky part this is five mil laminate i'm going to slide this in but i don't want to put it all the way to the top because i'm going to do something different i'm going to turn this into a closed pouch hopefully so let's open this up and carefully place this on here and I am going to put it in the center and reposition everything because I keep knocking it out of the of aligned alignment so we got those intact let's add some flakes almost forgot and I'm going to add silver this time Where's my little pokey tool? Um, because for some reason, I just feel like blue and silver go together. So that's what we're doing. Ooh, that's a big old clump. Wow, it's very staticky. Look at that, it's jumping around. Okay, so let's not breathe too hard so that we don't move anything. Carefully. Oh, that's stuck on there. Yikes. It's not in there straight, but I'm not gonna sweat it. <laughs> it's straight enough and it looks like everything is positioned on the pouch or the the baggie unfortunately i might have to move this over just a hair there we go again the baggie is crooked but hopefully i got enough up top there to accommodate that i think i do yeah more than enough okay so let's go ahead and feed this into the laminator. My laminator has been heating up for a minute, so it should be good and hot. Okay, so it got a little wrinkle because I don't know why I can never get this straight when I feed it through when it's at the full size. So I'm gonna trim some of this excess off and try and feed this through again just to smooth it out but i'm not getting too close because yeah so let's try again let's put this in through first all right i'm gonna set this aside so the rumbling hopefully won't be picked up. So this is what we're working with. But what we've done so far is cut out our graphics on vellum. We've added some gilding flakes in silver. All of that was supposedly placed on a clear product bag or baggie or cellophane bag. And I used a new one, but you can use one that you have uh, received something in the mail in or whatever the case may be. You want to make sure that it's, you know, in good, pretty good condition, but it doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to laminate it. And that's what we just did. Laminate the baggie. Now I'm going to trim it down before I open it. I'm going to do the trimming. So I'm going to trim the left, the right and the bottom. For now, I'm going to leave the top intact. And I've shared this before how I trim it down is I line the edge of whatever I have laminated to the edge of the white part on the same side of the paper trimmer. Let's do the bottom. So I'm just lining it up with what I laminated and trimming it. Okay, let's do this side. And you can't always go by the edge. You have to line this edge up here, top and bottom. 
So it's mostly straight. This is the part that I'm doing different. I'm going to keep the bulk of the excess from the top on here. So let's see. I think I'm doing two and three quarters inches. I'm keeping two and three quarter inches on there. And I know I've got the gilding flakes everywhere. So this is what I'm working with. Let's open the baggie here. And we've done this before on other occasions. Get my ruler and line it up on that edge right at the air bubble. Take my X-Acto knife or your craft knife and open it up. So you basically, we're gonna cut into that air bubble. So just lightly cut into it. You don't have to press down hard or anything because you don't want to go all the way through. You just want to break that seal. Mm, let's try a little bit more pressure. Okay, there we go. So now when you open it up, you got a pocket in there, which is your baggie. Go ahead and round the corner. This is the We Are Memory Keepers corner chomper. You can use your favorite corner rounder to do it. Now here is the part that I'm not so sure about. I'm gonna make this a flap <laughs> to fold over here. So let me get my scoreboard. When you're making an envelope, which basically that's what we're doing here, you don't want the fold or the flap to be right up against the edge of the pocket. You want to leave a little bit of space there. So we're going to leave, since our flap is two and three quarters, I think I want to leave a half inch. So I'm going to score at two and a quarter. Um, and I'm not sure that scoring is going to make that big of a difference. Let's do it on the back side. Two and a quarter. And then I'm going to go back with the thin tip. So I did it first with the, the bigger tip. Then I'm going to go back with that thin tip and really dig down in there. So now we've got a score line there. And we can go ahead and attempt <laughs> to fold on that score line. And now it's trying to fold where the pouch is, but I don't want it to fold right there. I want it to fold here. Then I'm going to take my bone folder, my tool here, and press down that crease. Now, I'm pretty sure you could probably fold maybe with this. I don't know. I think you need that gap in there. I was thinking that, well, maybe you can fold it down, um, right jam up against the pocket. But I don't know about that. It might make it difficult to get in. So I'm going to go ahead and round this corner. I'm going to use the half inch rounder for these. So that's the bigger rounder for the flap. And there we go. So that's what we got so far. I'm going to feed this back through, not only because I want to further put a crease here, I also want to make sure that I have a good seal around the edges. So let's, let's go this way. <laughs> that's enough with the laminator. So, here we go. We have our pocket with a flap. The flap is going to be problematic. <laughs> um, you're gonna have to work it, work it, work it. Make it go both ways. Burnish it with the bone folder. Really dig in there and press on it. Okay. Now I think using the baggie 
it makes it a little lightweight in this in this area as compared to the flap but it all depends on what you plan on doing with it um i think it's still a cool idea you can use it to send happy mail um and the recipient once they receive it could trim off the flap and put it in their planner if they want to or leave the uh, flap intact so our finished size is seven and a half by about five and a quarter so for now for the closure until i decide what i want to do i'll just put a paper clip on it and you could do the same thing if you don't have any desire to <laughs> make a closure let's see so you could just pop a cute little paper clip on to hold that flap closed and there you go you got a nice little pouch so this is just an envelope from the kit that I shared and I'm just gonna use that as an example of something that you can just stick in here um, you can load this up with goodies let me see I got another envelope here that hasn't been sealed yet let's pop that in there so it just kind of gives you an idea of what you can use this for you can fill it up with goodies and ship it off so that is it that is the project for today this is a diy laminated clear pouch using a cellophane or a product bag let me know in the comments what you think and also let me know in the comments what are your ideas for a closure let me know because we may come back and do a different type of closure so that is it i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give me a thumbs up also make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that little gray bell so that you'll receive notification each time i upload a new video be sure to check the community tab and my stories for updates throughout the week also check us out over at patreon.com slash scrapcraftastic for exclusive content and digital downloads Visit my other channel, Journal Life's Journey, for craft videos and junk journals. You can find me across social media at ScrapCraftTastic. Visit my website and shop at ScrapCraftTastic.com. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Bye!